Welcome to learning to drop spindle. Um, I am going to teach you the very basics of drop spindling. I'm using an Ashford student drop spindle. Um, it's got a tapestry warp uh, leader thread on it. Um, this, I like the leader thread, the tapestry warp, because it's nice and strong, but you can also use just crochet cotton. I'm just putting a knot at the end of mine. Uh, I just cleaned it off. Okay. It's attached to the shaft of the drop spindle um, just by a loop and now some fiber that's wrapped around it. To start spinning you have to put um, movement into your drop spindle and I like to do that um, by moving up my leg. Okay. You can also do it by flicking, um, although that is not my preferred method to get it to go. And I flick by pinching between my thumb and my pointer finger and either rolling this way or the other way. Um, and that really is just personal preference, trying a few different techniques out and figuring out what works for you. Um, I really like the book um, Respect the Spindle. I find it incredibly useful and it's a really great resource if you're going to teach yourself how to drop spindle. So today I'm working with some picked fiber. This is cloud, it's not at all carded. Okay, and I've pulled that out to um, be like a semi roving. When you're drop spindling, fiber prep makes a huge, huge difference. Um, and you work, I like to work with smaller pieces rather than lots of big, large pieces because I find that they're less likely to get caught. I'm gonna drape it around and over my wrist and bring it through my pointer finger and thumb. Here, actually, I bring it around and over my thumb um, right there. Now, to get myself started, I've got my leader thread. I'm gonna open it up here. And I'm going to place the fiber through the leader thread and up just like that. That, that together, once I get it started, will twist and it'll hold nice and strongly. It's a nice easy way to start off spinning. So I'm going to start by putting some twist into my yarn. And to do that, I need to get my drop spindle moving. I'm going to roll it up my leg. Okay. And you can see the twist is moving up my leader thread and now into my yarn. Okay, so that is sealed it so it's nice um, and started there. I'm just going to wind on to the cop a little bit or wind on a cop. So I'm going to start at the top and move my thread down and back and forth a little bit. I need to leave just enough left here that I can wrap it around my hook and up. And I like to come um, from the right side up and through but you can come from the left. It's really just personal preference. So I'm going to pinch where my twist stops. Now, when I go to roll up, I'm going to take my bottom hand that was I was using to get my spindle moving, and I'm going to replace my top hand with it, pinch that twist and move this hand up so that um, I can gradually let the twist in from the bottom here into the drafting zone, which is here, and I can continue to draft with my top hand. So I'll show you how that what that looks like. Okay, and as my spindle starts to slow down, I'll pinch with my top hand, start it going again, and spin down. Now when you first start out, you may find that you don't get it going this long. That makes sense because it takes a little bit of muscle memory to do it. I recommend practicing in short spurts, giving yourself lots of time. If you drop your drop spindle, if it goes flying across the room, that's totally okay. That's part of the reason I really like the student spindles. They're hard to break. Uh, so I'm going to do that again with just a little bit more fiber. Okay. And this for me is picked enough. Okay, so I've got my faux roving there. I've got my pinch. Get my spindle going, replace bottom hand, and then draft with the top hand. And drafting is going to allow me to control the thickness or the texture in my yarn. And I'm letting in lots of bits and pieces of texture. That's part of the reason I'm using um, a picked but not carded prep, otherwise known as cloud. This is Teeswater Lamb, so there's still some curls left in it. And it's got a medium length staple. So when we get to the bottom there and I want to wind on, what I do is I pinch between my thumb and pointer finger and then I bring it around behind all of my fingers 
and I wrap it around behind my pointer finger, come in front of the pointer finger, behind the pinky finger, and I continue like that, creating a figure eight or a butterfly until I'm close to my spindle. I unhook and then I wind my cop going up and down. And I've got a little bit of extra fiber here that wants to escape. I like the figure eight rather than just wrapping around because it gives me a little bit more tensioning so that my yarn doesn't bend back on itself like this um, and, and create these little curls. And it also allows me to wind on more tightly, which means that um, I can get more yardage onto my drop spindle. So I'll do this demo one last time with the last little bit that I've got going. I've got my finger pinched at where my twist ends. I'm gonna pull up, whoops. And see, that's one of the reasons you want the fiber out of the way because it gets caught. So I'm just gonna undo that and pull it out a little bit more. Keep that out of the way. So again, I'm pinching, start my spindle going. And I draft with my top hand, a little bit more twist. Now I've come to the end of my fiber supply and I'm just going to show you how to create a join. Before creating a join, um, I always like to wind on so that I don't have lots of extra fiber hanging around. I always like to have a little loose bit so if I've spun right to the very end I just open it up a bit again so that it's a little bit looser. Grab a little bit of my fiber supply here, draft it out a bit, creating a sort of faux ro roving. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap the two fibers just like this. Um, and I'm going to pinch at the bottom of them. I've got this hooked around and I'm going to flip that the, op the prepped fiber across my wrist so it's out of my way. And once I start that spin, that join becomes nice and smooth and nice and strong. So I usually spin a little less when I'm doing a join so that I can get that join cemented together before I continue on and then I just start my spindle again. Going all the way down. Um, if you would like some information on how to um, prep textured bats, you can check out my how to prep a kerfuffle bat. You can also take a look at my how to spin a kerfuffle bat video. Um, and that will give you lots of good information for how to pre-prep your fiber. If you are just starting out on your drop spindle journey, I prefer or recommend um, a, carded, a carded prep um, because it um, holds together a little bit more easily and it's not as, um, as a, than a, clouded, a cloud prep like I'm using here. Um, but it also isn't as slippery as um, a combed top.